What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about why manufacturers stop making two-stroke outboard engines for the boating industry. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I post two videos a week to help you catch more fish or to generally educate you like this video here. With Evangroot ending their E-Tech line of engines, there's currently no one making a full line of two-stroke engines anymore. So that brings up the question, why did manufacturers stop making two-stroke engines? So the answer is actually pretty simple. The EPA has been putting more and more emission restrictions on outboard engines since 1998. So just to give you a little, little insight, they're more focused on the hydrocarbon and NOx emissions. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll, I'll help you out. Hydrocarbons is essentially just unburnt fuel. So if you've ever owned a two-stroke engine of any kind, you know that there's a certain amount of unburnt fuel that is emitted from the engine. And it's just how two-strokes work. So to help you understand, I've actually put together a few uh, tables here to help you understand how restrictive the EPA has been on the outboard industry. So the first one I'm going to throw up there is in where we started at in 1998. So now let's take a little closer look. Now we have horsepower and we have the max emission limits and kilograms per hour of the hydrocarbon plus NOx. And that's how the EPA has classified this. So for, for each different horsepower category, there is an emission limit on that horsepower. So for a 60 horse, there is, you're allowed 7.1 kilograms per hour of hydrocarbons in NOx. That is in 1998. And 150, you get 16.6. And 250, you get 27.1. So these numbers don't mean a whole lot unless you got something to compare it to. So let's throw up the 2006 emission limits. So over here now, we have the same kind of look. We have the 60, 150, and 250 horsepowers. And notice that the, the 60, I'll throw up the, the 1998 here so we can have a little, little better comparison here. The 60 horsepower emission limits went from 7.1 to 2.2. 150 went from 16.6 to 5.1 and all across the board that is over a 60% reduction in emissions in fact you know you're only left with less than a third of the previous emission limits now moving on to what we currently our current standards have uh, the last standard was uh, actually for 2010 and on so here are the emission limits for 2010 and on 0.8, 1.8, and 3. That is a lot less than what we started out with in 1998. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about here where the 1998 had so much higher emission limits than we do today. Uh, in fact, there's only 11% left of the original emission limits on outboard engines. So that being said, they had to reduce their emissions by 90% or so, well, more than that, actually, depending on how you do the math, but they had to reduce their emissions a lot. Now, two strokes, especially carbureted two strokes, uh, you'll see that, hey, you have lots and lots of emissions come from those. Uh, they worked on that to get down to those limits using fuel injection type uh, technologies. I'm sure many of you have seen those, uh, but now we're down to four strokes especially here in the US where all we're gonna get from here on out is probably a four stroke engine. So all these emission limits have forced manufacturers either to invest in emission control technologies on their two stroke engines or go to another technology, the four stroke, which actually has a cycle to completely burn all the fuel. Evan Rude is the only manufacturer that went toward the two stroke. Uh, route that I know of, or at least largely in that direction. Uh, they did perform well. They had some good technologies. 
I've heard, you know, through the grapevine that their uh, reliability was very, very poor. So that might be some of the reason why Avenue has ceased making E-Tech engines because of their reliability. And everyone else went with an older technology, the four-stroke. Uh, it's tried and true and has been proven for many, many years in the automotive industry. So they adapted it, made it smaller and more compact, and are able to get pretty close to the performance of the old two-strokes. Now that being said, now I know there's a lot of die-hard two-stroke guys out there, and I'm sorry, I don't think we're ever going to see another two-stroke brand come out. Uh, we, we may, uh, if they can ever figure out the emission control technologies to like maybe on the diesels where you put some of that fuel back, unburnt fuel back into the engine or something along those lines. I'm, I'm not really sure how the E-Tech engines work, so they may have already done that. But unless somebody really wants to spend some serious time and serious money to invest in the two-stroke technology, I doubt we will ever see one again. Right now, we're stuck with the four strokes and that Mercury Pro XS four stroke, the, the larger one, the V8. That one sounds pretty monstrous. I had never rode in one. Uh, I know a few guys who have one and they they like them pretty well. I can't wait to get one someday. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with my little uh, four cylinder four stroke that put puts around the lake for me. But like always, until next time, Get out there and go catch you some fish.